Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Adventures by Herdwatt. I'm Katie Shanahan and today I'm in County Kerry in the south of Ireland where I'm going to meet with a young farmer who had to overcome numerous challenges on her entrance into soccer farming. Let's take a look. So I am here in the south of Ireland. We're in County Kerry and I'm joined by Karen Moynihan. Thanks for having us, Karen. Thanks, Katie. So uh, we are going to take a look around. What have you in store for us today? Well, we have a few of the cattle outside at the moment. So why don't we go down and have a look at those first? Great. Let's take a look. Farming here on a suckler farm with my dad, Jerry. We have about 20 cattle spring calving. So our first is due now next week. Uh, my dad had an accident uh, almost 10 years ago now uh, when he was a carpenter. He fell through a ceiling and uh, broke his spine, uh, which uh, went through his spinal cord and therefore he is in a wheelchair now. And yeah, it got to a point where we just didn't know uh, if we keep it going and I moved back home from Cork to build a house on the land here. Just said one day. I'll, I'll feed them there for the winter and that's how it all <laughs> how started. Later. <laughs> exactly. I, I didn't realise what I was getting myself into at the time, but that's how it started anyway. Actually, it's funny, only last week I recorded a, a podcast with April's Farm and they were on about, you know, it's, it's a massive change for a family to go through when there is some sort of accident and the main farmer is no longer able to do it every single day it's been a massive learning curve for yourself oh massive I mean my dad often says it now when he'd be out and he'd be showing me how to use some sort of power tool or whatever and I say dad why didn't you show me this when I was younger you know instead of doing it now but sure he always says he never expected that I'd have to use it you know he always thought he'd be the one that could do it for us you know so it is it's a big change for him and it's a big change for us but yeah, a steep learning curve. So they're looking nice and content here behind us. Uh, I bet they weren't that relaxed the first day they came out of the shed. No, not at all. <laughs> the same every year. <laughs> they the go a bit wild, but there they can down now. Yeah, so what, what's be behind us here now and uh, what's your plans for them for the next few months ahead? Yeah, so we've last year's spring calves, so all yearlings now. And the two standing up at the back there, they're actually mother and daughter. So they'll both head to the factory probably around May um, is the plan. These guys then will probably keep them till they're about 21, 22 months. And um, this year we finish our cattle. Generally, we send them to the marsh. So I think now next year we'll just see where we're at Uh and see what we decide to do with them. What was your reasoning behind finishing them this year? So we went down with TB okay. for the first time uh, on the farm uh, in November of last year. So we went down with one heifer only. Uh, she came back with lesions, all right, so she did have it. Uh, we've had one clear test since. So this week now we'll hopefully get the second clear test and it will be opened back up again. Unfortunately, TB is such a hot topic. I think in Ireland generally uh, in the last few months, uh, yeah. what, what do you know, this part of the country, would it be big for deer? Do you think it's badgers? What's what he, have you done any testing in the area? Yeah, so I mean, the numbers are up massively. For me, I'm convinced it's deer and anyone who's followed me online will, will know that I strongly believe it's deer. We have a glen just over there and the cattle are in here mixing with deer. We see the deer in here. We've some other fields as well. And we see the deer just walk through the fields, walk through the herd. Yeah. Um, there's badgers around as well, but there's always been badgers. Yeah. You know, I think the lack of culling over the few years uh, with COVID um, of the deer just meant that the population, especially where I am here in Kerry, has just multiplied. So. For me, I think it's definitely coming from the deer. We don't buy in any animals. You know, all of these have spent all their lives here on this farm. So it coming from the wildlife. Um, we'll look, hopefully. Yeah, and in terms of the stock you have kept now, you're going to finish, finish them off. 
Have you, you know, weighed them? How do you maintain, you know, how do you, do you see if you're going to make profit at the end of them? You know, what, what, what are the <laughs> tips and tricks? Or <laughs> we, we try to find out. So, yeah, um, I only got a weighing scale for the first time last year. So I've weighed these guys twice already. Uh, I'll weigh them again this week. Um, and it's just about monitoring their daily gains. Uh, we put them up on the scales. While I'm putting them on the scales, Dad's having a look at her watch, yeah. inputting them all and having a look at the daily games. And I think especially when you're finishing camp, it's just so important to know what you have. Yeah. I mean, it's all well and good to look at them and think that looks a good animal, but it's great to be able to see what your daily games are and how they're coming along and what you might need to do to, to get them to where they need to be. You know, I think people would be interested to know a little bit about your social media journey because not everyone watching might be aware, but you're you're very active on social media promoting farming in general. How how did you get into it? Uh, the sisters convinced me to download TikTok at some point during lockdown, and uh, I said fine. And then soon after that, I just came across farm talk, I suppose, and. She, yeah, I just, one day in the shed, I took one shot of the cattle in the shed and I kind of just took off from then. You know, I was just amazed that strangers who I don't know at all liked my cattle and liked my videos. So I don't try and hide anything or show the good side and not the bad side. I like to show it all. And I think in a way people appreciate that as well because it allows people to feel like they're not in it alone because I think we all know in farming there's ups and downs and there's some days you think you're the only one in the world with the problems that you have but you know I think it's important to see to see a bit of all of it. So Karen tell me what does Herd Watch mean to you the daily runnings of the farm? Yeah, I suppose things are just more convenient, you know, and I can just click in and see when they're due exactly. And then, of course, we'll be registering the cows when they're born as well. So the fact then as well that myself and Dad have access to it, so we can both input what we need to. And it's great then when it comes to the likes of the Borbia inspection that we know everything is in there. It's in one place. We can get the reports off there. And um, yeah, it just makes life a lot easier. Herdwatch gives us all the information we need when and where we want it, improving compliance and performance here on the farm.